This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets. People. Pop culture. Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs. Hello everyone, I'm Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs and the host of Vegas Rock Dog Radio. On today's show, I'm talking about royal dog weddings, corgis and natural remedies for nausea in pets. So stay right there. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets. People. Pop culture. Hi, everyone. That was a funny sound. (laughs) Hi, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs, and this is Vegas Rock Dog Radio, a rock and roll show all about pets, people, and pop culture. Welcome to the show, everybody. Wow. This year has flown by, hasn't it, Jim? Jim's in studio with me today. Zippity-doo. I don't like it. It's only about... No, oh, it's a third of the way through anyhow. We're nearly halfway through. I know. I'm not happy about that. I'm not happy about that at all. I feel like this year has gone too fast. I feel like I can't catch up. So much going on. Oh, my goodness. And every year we say, let's not be as crazy as we were last year. And we're crazier each year. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to stop saying it. Well, welcome to the show, everyone. Got lots to talk about today. Uh, uh, the royalty and uh, weddings are going to be a big part of the show's theme today. And why not? Because we've got the marriage of Harry and Meghan over in England. Happening. Harry and Potter. Harry and Potter. Okay. <laughs> why would you say that? It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> They're not as important to me as they are to you. Excuse me. They're not. Excuse a, me. Uh, just the way it is. Excuse me. You're American now too. No, I'm not. You are. <laughs> Don't even. Don't how, even. How many passports do you have? I have two. Which is the one you have to travel with? My British one. Which is the one you can when only get back home. into the country with? The American one. Okay. That's it. Well. There you go. It's very complicated, my friends. It's very complicated. <laughs> Immigration is quite complicated. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit more complicated when you ha- come from a country that recognizes dual citizenship, and not all countries do. So it can get a little bit tricky, as I've as I've experienced in the past. <laughs> as your interrogation proves. <laughs> that is no lie. He, I was detained. <sighs> Not because I did anything wrong, but because it's... it's Because you did do something I wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. You left on the wrong passport, so no, they wouldn't no, let you in. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I only just got the citizenship and had already planned to go to England, and I didn't have time to get a passport. And what happened? What? Well, you know, well, you don't even know what happened because nobody knew what happened to me because I was detained for three hours. <laughs> let me tell you. I wasn't going to go into this story, but now Jim has piqued everybody's interest. Mm-hmm. They want to know. So, as I explained, I got my citizenship, and then I'd already got pl- a plan to go to England. Nowhere near enough time to get a passport. I've always traveled on my British passport. I'm officially a dual citizen, so I'm fingerprinted <laughs> every which way possible for the last 20 years. So, I exist, I'm in the system. Anyway, when I went to fly back and you log in online, do we have to listen to you drinking coffee? Really? I, I didn't hear that. We heard that. That was really loud. Turn my mic off. <laughs> That's it. See ya. So what happened was I went to log in online as you do, 
there's a form you fill out. I'm traveling back to the States and I, I fit into some of the categories and then some drop down menus didn't give me an option. So I called the airlines and said, ah, oh, I don't know what's going on with this. Because, oh, don't worry about it. I said, I'm dual citizen. She said, oh, okay, don't worry. Just come in, check in at the airport. We'll take care of it. No problem. Override. We have this all the time. So we get there and they can't override it. So they have to call some, they have to call the American, is he the consulate? Who works at the airport? That was an, an American consulate okay. of some sort, but I don't know. He could have just been some like no, no, no. He customer service agent no. that said he was no, no, no. He was official. Ameri- worked for the, the American whatever. Yeah, but he didn't give you anything. He in didn't writing. work for the airline. He didn't work for the airlines. He's the only person that could override it. So he came and he said, it "Could have been a guy just coming for a cup." It of was coffee. not. <laughs> well, I don't know because the result was a little bit like that. So he said, "No problem. It, I've it's, I've overridden it in the system." I said, "Do I need a letter or anything?" He goes, "Nope, you're good to go. I will allow you to travel today." Is what he told me. Oh, well, that's nice of him. So didn't feel good about it on the plane for a good what eleven hours. I get to I think it was Atlanta. Now the other system that you go up to the machine and you you put your fingerprints in and all that good stuff. And I checked out with that. There's someone stood there as well. And he said, uh, do you have an American passport? I said, no, I'm on my British passport. I'm a dual citizen. I've just recently got my citizenship very recently. Blah, 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 blah. And I check out and everything. And he goes, oh, I can't override this system. <laughs> they probably knew about you while you were in the air. Well, here's the thing. So I was then trundled off to someone else who was not very nice to me. And then I was passed on to someone else who, again, was not very nice to me for no reason. I said to them, I have a copy of my, what do they call it, naturalization certificate? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're I so, have you're... it on my phone. You don't travel with it because it's massive. It's like ridiculous. So I had, my, I had a copy of it on my phone. And I said, can I show you that? And they said, nope. And I said, oh, can I explain? They go, nope. And that's how rude they were to me for three hours. Put me in this room that you can't see out, but they can see in. (laughs) With all manner of people trying to get in illegally. (laughs) They know I check out. They got my fingerprints. They've acknowledged that. And they make me wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. Meanwhile, no one knows what's happened to me. Jim doesn't know. Nobody knows. And then finally, uh, they they call me up for this interview and very rude to me, actually. Very, very rude. I was incredibly stressed out. Incredibly stressed out. And... um, Finally, they let me continue on my travels. And I've been a green card holder for over 20 years. I'm in the system, and I just recently got the citizenship, blah, blah, blah. Horrible experience. Horrible experience. There's just no need to be rude. There's no, no matter what the process is they have to put you through, there's no need to be rude to people and make them feel like they've done something wrong, which I hadn't. So then I almost missed my next flight because of all this ridiculousness and yeah it was crazy town so that's why i say it's complicated because here's the thing if i'm going into england no problem i'm i'm a, I'm a british subject so i use my british passport no problem coming back because i even though i'm dual citizenship they go oh you're coming back as an american so you must have an american passport that was the issue but here's the weird thing it looks like i went into england and it looks like i never left england if I go back on an American passport, see how that how, how that's tricky. So you they can't know. track my travel on one one single passport. They can't track it on one passport because I'm using two. See what I mean? See where the problem is? If you're a citizen here, you have to leave here and come back on the same passport. The, the rule is you got to leave. But I didn't because when I go to England, what do I do? I go through British customs. Well, that's a problem on the English side. I think. No, it's not. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, uh, Look, this is taking up far too much time of the show, it's and it's got, got nothing my, to do with uh, pets. Nothing at all. Have some of your new drinks. Had I been traveling with my pet, that would have been a living nightmare. I will say that much. Okay, so let's get on with the show. Since we're talking about England, I am doing... Uh, uh, next week I'm hosting Vegas Rock Dog Radio is hosting Barkingham Palace a Royal Dog Wedding it's the second one that I get to plan which is fantastic we did the first one to celebrate the marriage of Kate and Will and now we get to celebrate Harry and Meghan 
Cat Wee and Harry and Potter. Oh, you're so rude. Oh, my gosh. I'll never get this flipping story uh, there out. There will be comments about my comments. Here's the thing. It's a, it's, when we did this last time, we had so much fun with it. We raised money and got lots of attention. Lots of attention, especially in Vegas. And I ended up doing some some kind of correspondence stuff with BBC because they got to hear about it through my sister and so we get to do it again, and it's at the same pub, the Crown and Anchor Pub. Big thank you to my friend June, who owns the pub, and it's the one on Tropicana, and we'll be on the patio. It's exclusive for our event. Very exciting. Going to be decked out full-on British, like you're going to a British wedding and a royal one at that. And, of course, we're going to marry two dogs. We're marrying Red, and we're marrying... You don't even know who we're marrying. I'm pointing at Jim for the answer. Who are we marrying? Red and... Nanny's dog. Gracie. So Red and Gracie are getting married. <laughs> you know, Red, he was found tie, uh, tied to a, I think Nanny said a cactus bush. Mm. Terrible. He had cactus spines in him. From Terrible. What, yes, awful, isn't it? But she saved him. And Gracie, again, she's, she was rescued as well. We're going to have bride's dogs and groom's dogs in the wedding also. We, we ran a little contest, which was fun to select everyone. It was great. Odie's eyes, who has no eyes, he has no eyes. He said he'd like to be the witness. <laughs> so Odie's a witness. And the people that are involved in this, and it's a lot of people, of course, the Crown and Anchor Pub, big thank you to June for giving us the pub. Dogs ID tag, that's our friend Sandy. She's making custom dog tags for the dogs to exchange. We also want to thank Einstein Pet because they're providing all the treats with special flavors just for the this royal wedding, Barkingham Palace, and it's going to be a treat bar. So as you go to lots of weddings these days, they have the candy bar, the sweet bar. Now we've got the treat bar for the dogs. I want to thank Pet Scene Magazine for all the magazines to go in the swag bags. The Dog House for all the bridesmaids and the, and the um, groom's, br- groom's dog's outfits. Entirely pets for treats that are going to go in the swag bags. And a big thank you to Wags and Whiskers because they're making the pup cakes, the royal pup cakes for, for the dogs. Going to be a really, really fun time. Thankfully, the weather is going to cool down. We did check the temperature when we went the other day. And as soon as the sun goes down, there's a lot of shade there. It's lovely. A couple of trees. It's, it's just really nice. It's all enclosed in. And the biggest requirement is that you come dress as if you're going to a royal wedding. So that means big hats. That means fascinators. That means the most loveliest of dresses to just celebrate and feel rather fancy. What are you wearing, by the way, Jim? Are you going to wear your top hat? I don't think so. I think I'm going to dress as an American visiting a British wedding. I, I cannot be, I cannot ever be British. I can only You be. could if you gave up your citizenship, but... You you have to give up your citizenship, whereas I didn't have to give up mine. Right. I don't know you. I haven't decided yet. No, oh, okay. Because I know I'm going to be working a lot, and so I might be getting dirty. No, there's, you won't get dirty. You don't think? No. We're hmm. going to decorate it in the day. Pam's flying in from Rocking for Rescues, and that's who we benefit, but Rocking for Rescues. It's going to be fun. I'm really excited. We're going to stream it, too. And we'll stream it on Vegas Rock Dog Radio. So make sure you follow the page that day. We'll create an event for this so that you can actually watch it live. And we will also video it. So we have a really good copy of it at the end. Uh, tickets are $20. It's nothing. It's peanuts. Have such a good time with your pets. You can bring your pets. Make sure they enjoy people and they enjoy other dogs. We'll probably have a little cooling station as well in case it does get a little bit warm. But as I say, we start at 6.30. Sun goes down. It was nice last night, wasn't it, Oh, Jim? the weather is this weekend is awesome. Yeah. This morning we went out for four miles, me and the two monkeys. Yeah, can't, you can't and, uh, knock it, can you? It's so good right now. Today. It was like 65 this morning. Lovely. Now, to get tickets, you can go to rockingforrescues.org. And you can click on swag and you'll see Barkingham Palace there. Or you can click on events, you'll see it there also. Or you can click on the very top bar when you get to the homepage and it says get your Barkingham Palace tickets. $20, small processing fee. There won't be any physical tickets. You'll be on a guest list when you show up. And the first 20 people who have a ticket will get a swag bag. Now, of course, the way we raise money is not just through tickets, but we raise money through our legendary raffles. And we've got some fantastic prizes. Some are animal race related and some are human related. So not just all pets. And if you don't have a pet, you can still get a ticket and come to the event. 
It's going to be exciting. And then I want to thank my, my sister, my baby sister, Siobhan. She is writing the Bow Wow Vows because, you know, she's funny. So she's going to write the Bow Wow Vows with all personalized. Exciting times ahead. Exciting times ahead next week. But for my for me, I love I love anything to do with the royal family. I love tradition. I love history. I love the pomp and circumstance. It all has a meaning. And it's going to be a great week, actually, because there are a lot of TV shows featuring the royal wedding and past weddings and all the traditions. And I love all of that. I love it. So our event is the day before the wedding, which is Friday, May the 18th. So, and I'll put the link up, of course, on our Facebook page. And the more people we get there, the more money we can raise, and the more fun we can have. There won't be one of these for a while after this one. No, there won't be. No, there won't. Unless. Oh, no, uh, I think it, I think Princess Eugenie's getting married. Nobody knows her. They, I do. English people do, but. Yeah. Hey, look, any role. She's the one that wears the funny hats. Yeah, I love it. I love the crazy one she wore. I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was amazing. I did, honestly. I thought it was so good. Um, what was I going to say? We love a wedding. The atmosphere in England will be unreal. It'll be like the whole country is having a party. It's so much fun. Oh, so much fun. Mind you, saying that's gonna be it's gonna be rammed at Windsor. Windsor's not big. <laughs> it's going to be rammed. I think if you were trying to drive in, you probably may not get in. <laughs> Isn't Windsor outside the village we visited where they used to make Doc Martens? Isn't that no, insane? that's that's where Adrian lives. Well, it's not in the same area. Mm-mm, no. Well, another thing that's happening today, Mr. Jim. What's that? It's National Dog Mum Day. Mm. People say dog mom here. I say dog mum. <laughs> and I know some people think it's a silly holiday to to celebrate for some people. But in all honesty, it does take a lot to care for your pets, doesn't it, Jim? Heck yeah. Grooming, walking, preparing their food, which what, that's what we'll be doing this weekend. Getting woken up at three in the morning. For a wee. I mean, to go for a wee, yeah. Getting your arms scratched off and you're trying <laughs> to get extra hours sleep. <laughs> Your vet visits, uh, giving meds, and for anyone who's got a pet who's ill, you can double all of that work, really. It's a lot of work, and it's a lot of loving, as we like to say. So I do think it is a lovely day to celebrate the dog mums of this world. And my dogs are treating me to some shopping at H&M, aren't they, Jim? They are. Isn't that nice? Oh, they're paying out of their dog bank, (laughs) out of their piggy bank. I don't know. It might be the bank of Jim, I think. Mm. That's what I'm thinking. Well, let's take a quick break, because when we come back, since we're going to keep on the royal theme for a while, we're going to talk about the Welsh Corgi when we get back. So hang on in there, and uh, we'll be talking about those little short-legged doggies when we come back. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio with me, Sam, your host, the queen of rock and roll dogs. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets. People. Pop culture. When Helen Brown ran away to New York City five years ago, she had no idea that a homeless cat with a punk rock haircut and enough catitude to light up the Empire State Building would be the one to teach her the true meaning of love and a forever home. In the tradition of her internationally best-selling memoir, Cleo, Helen Brown's Bono, the amazing story of a rescue cat who inspired a community, is a heartwarming true story about a woman without an anchor. A homeless cat without much hope, and finding a forever home in the city that never sleeps. Modern Cat Magazine calls Bono an uplifting tale about how everyone deserves love and a second chance. Bono by Helen Brown is on sale now everywhere. Listeners, I'd love to introduce you to PetPlate.com. They deliver freshly cooked human-grade dog food right to your door. I'm talking about dog food that is so high quality that even us humans could technically eat it. I've been feeding Pet Plate to my pup for the last two weeks, and it's perfect for my picky pup and perfect for me since I'm so busy. So if you want something super healthy, really tasty, and ready to serve, go to PetPlate.com forward slash spot to get 30% off your first box. Once again, that's PetPlate.com forward slash spot to get 30% off your first box. P-E-T-P-L-A-T-E dot com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. 
Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Heads. People. Pop culture. Welcome, everyone. Welcome back. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio. We're talking all things royal dog weddings right now. <laughs> then we're going to get onto some great information towards the end of the show that should help your pets. But let's talk about Welsh corgis. Do you like a corgi, Jim? Um, we don't see them. They're very- not a dog that I think very much about. Because I don't see very often. We don't see them very often here. It's funny, isn't it? You see certain breeds in certain countries. You don't see, you don't see uh, those wiggle butts, those furry wiggle butts much. I do have a friend who's got a corgi, and she's British. <laughs> and uh, she's called Princess Gwenny. <laughs> I kid you not. Oh. <laughs> That's her name, Princess Gwenny. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about the Welsh Corgi. I just want to give you some history about the dog itself. It's sometimes known, sometimes known as just the Corgi, and they got their name from two Welsh words that mean dwarf and dog. Welsh for dwarf, dog, plural, Corgis, duh. Or occasionally, the etymologically, et- etym- etymologically, I got it right the first time, uh, consistent Corgwin. And it's a small type of herding dog that originated in Wales in the United Kingdom. These separate breeds are recognised, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi and the Cardigan Welsh Corgi. 2000, not 2000, 1925. In 1925, the first Welsh Corgi was bred. Oh, so it's coming up on an anniversary, 100 year anniversary soon. Historically, the Pembroke had has been attributed to the influx of dogs alongside Flemish weavers from around the 10th century, while the cardigan is attributed to the dogs brought with Norse settlers, in particular a common ancestor of the Swedish Valhund. According to the dog breed... Viking jo- dogs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. According to the dog breed journal published in 2018, there are two different corgi breeds. One is... Is called a Pembroke Welsh Corgi, which is the younger breed, as opposed to the Cardigan Welsh Corgi. A certain breed, a certain degree of interbreeding between the two types has been suggested to explain the similarities between the two. Well, I'm sure it would happen at some point, <laughs> wouldn't it, Jim? Probably. <laughs> Bound to. Uh, the Pembroke is the more popular breed of the two, with the Cardigan Welsh Corgi appearing at the Kennel Club's list of vulnerable native breeds. There are several physical differences between the two types according to the breed standards. The Cardigan is larger overall, both in weight and height. Traditionally, the tails were of different shapes, but docking had previously been used. You know, I don't like that. With I've never seen a Corgi without with, with a tail, so I need to try and find a picture now because... I'm sorry, I think cats and dogs and all these animals that people try and (laughs) mutilate, basically, by cropping ears and all that good stuff, I think they look perfect whole. That's what I believe in. Um, You know uh, how people are, though. Doberman doesn't look as intimidating without the ears. Really, when when you think about it, think about this. I'm going a little bit off topic, kind of. When you think about it, these AKC registered dogs, blah, 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 kennel clubs. It's only about looks. They don't breed for uh, health. It's for looks. It's kind of, you know, shallow. Mm. <laughs> I love any dog. I don't I don't care if, if someone says it's, you know, a champion, whatever. I just, oh. I just love animals as they are in their natural state. But that's really what it is. It's bred for looks. So, yeah, I'd be interested to see what they look like with a tail. Uh, where was it going with this? Oh, I can go one second. Um, with regards to their health, according to, to a 2014 survey, they both had similar lifespans, although kidney or urethral conditions are more likely in the Pembrokes. Furthermore, Pembroke corgis were more likely to have eye problems than the cardigan breed. The Pembroke Welsh Corgi gained its popularity over the Cardigan Welsh Corgi because the Queen, Queen Elizabeth II, preferred the Pembroke. The favoured Corgis had longer bodies, thick coats of fur, and some are born without a tail. Interesting. Hmm. How does that happen over time? How does that happen over time? Mystery. Interesting. I've got to read into this one. Welsh Corgis have a strong association with Queen Elizabeth II, who has personally owned more than 30 dogs, either Pembrokes or Corgi Dachshunds, because they're, also, they're also known as Dorgies. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Mixes of corgis and dachshunds. Yeah. See, so it's the history of the breed. They were 
uh, used as herding dogs specifically for cattle. They're, they are the type of herding dog referred to as healers, meaning that they would nip at the heels of the large animals to keep them on the move. Both Pembrokeshire and Cardigan are historically agricultural areas of Wales. The combination of the low height of the ground and innate agility of Welsh corgis would allow them to avoid the hoofs of cattle. The term corgi means either cur, which means dog, or dwarf, no, no, sorry, means either cur, which is a dog, or dwarf, dog, cor, dwarf, g, goodness me, it's a whole breakdown of the word, cor, dwarf, g means lenitive, of C means dog in the Welsh language, which was not intended as an insult to the dog's size, rather as a purely descriptive term. This is also a folk legend that says corgis were a gift from the woodland fairies. Oh, I love that. And that the breed's markings were left on its coat by fairy harnesses and saddles. Do you know how much I love that? That sounds so British to me. That goes right, <laughs> that plays right into your unicorn. <laughs> Thing. It does. I think that's fantastic. Pembrokeshire and a, oh gosh, I wonder if there's any kind of illustrations showing that. If any artists have done that kind of thing. Oh, I love that. Find me something, Jim. Find me something with corgis and and um, woodland fairies. Oh, I love it. Pembrokeshire and Cardiganshire are adjoining historical counties in southwest Wales. Different tales have been told of the corgi's origin. Some believe that the two modern breeds evolved from a shared ancestry, while others attribute the import of the Pembroke, Pembroke Welsh, corgi, Welsh corgi to Flemish weavers starting around that 10th century, as we said earlier. Further theories on the origin of the Pembroke variety suggest that they may have originated from Central European herding breeds from the area around modern Germany. Depending on the time period when these dogs were imported to Wales, they could have been either uh, Deutsch Bracken or Dachshund breed. <laughs> you like my accent? Uh, the Cardigan Welsh Corgi has been attributed to the influences of Nordic settlers in the region. Dogs of similar dimensions exist in modern Scandinavia, called the Swedish Valhund. Oh, I need to see a picture of that. And it is claimed by some historians that these two breeds shared a common ancestor. Now, farmers in Cardiganshire began to switch from cattle to sheep in the late 19th century, but the existing breed was insu- insu- unsuited to working with sheep flocks. The dog began to be crossed with a Welsh sheepdog, and this is the source of the mill colour pattern of the breed. The subsequent similarities between the two types of Welsh corgis have been attributed to crossbreeding between the two, or simply selected breeders from farmers who wish to have the cardigan variety appear closer in nature to the Pembroke breed. It's very convoluted. Uh, the first recorded date for corgis appearing in the show ring in Wales is in 1925. Captain J.P. Howell called together a meeting of breeders of both the Pembroke and Cardigan varieties and formed the Welsh Corgi Club with an initial membership of 59 people. A general breed standard was drawn up and corgis began to appear in confirmation shows. Until this point, neither breed had been specifically bred for looks. And uh, members of this club were primarily interested in the Pembroke variety, although the Cardigan variety also appeared. At that point, the breeds were referred to as the Pembrokeshire and Cardiganshire variety varieties. The names were later shortened. I see why, because as you know, I can't pronounce them. There were a number of disputes between the breeders of the two types in early shows, as judges who were breeders of one type would often favour them. The Welsh Corgi appeared at Crufts, for the first time in 1927. The first championship was awarded at a Cardiff show in 1928. Oh, do I have a story about Cardiff? But I don't have time to tell it. To a red and white Pembroke bitch named Shan Fatch. That's an interesting last name. The breeds continued to be judged together until 1934 when the Kennel Club recognised each breed separately. In that initial registration, some 59 cardigans and 240 Pembrokes were listed in the pedigree books. The decisions about the breed to which each dog belonged were sometimes left to the owners, who were free to choose whatever they felt were the most appropriate. The first dog to be named Best in Show at an open confirmation show was... Oh, wow. Was... Bow, bow, bow hit pivot 
Okay. Uh, Cardigan Welsh Corgis continue to be rarer than Pembroke's, with only 11 registrations made in the war year of 1940. Both breeds survived the Second World War, although the Cardigans registered with the Kennel Club numbered only 61 by the end of the war. Pembroke's became very popular during the post-war years in the United Kingdom. In 1953, it was ranked as the fourth most popular breed by the Kennel Club. Check your email, by the way. Okay, and that was behind the English Cocker Spaniel, the German Shepherd, and the Pekingese. And in 1955, the reserve best in show at Crufts was the Pembroke Welsh Corgi K-Top Maracas Mint. <laughs> Aren't you glad I didn't name my dogs that? <laughs> Can you imagine shouting that dog? K-Top Maracas Mint, come over here. <laughs> and that was beaten by the standard poodle. Uh, and that poodle was called Sigain St- 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 Afri of Nashend. And the corgi breeds declined in popularity. Veterinarian uh, physician Brian Singleton suggested in the Times in 1963 that this was due to issues with their temperament. What does he mean by that? Uh, so just to wrap this up, the Cardigan Welsh Corgi was listed in the Kennel Club's first list of vulnerable native breeds in 2006. This list is for those breeds which registered more less than 300 dogs in any one year. There had been 84 Cardigan Corgis registered in 2006. After an initial increase, this declined to 46 in 2010, but then rose to the highest number since the list began in 2015, with a total, a total of 124 puppies registered. In 2013, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi was also added, as there had only been 241 puppies registered that year. While the Kennel Club blamed this on the importation of foreign dog breeds, the Daily Telegraph blamed the decline on the on the on the ban on tail docking introduced six years before there you go however 2015 saw an increase of 34 percent the number of pembroke registrations the popularity of corgis on instagram was credited for the change ah it's instagram i'd say make a star of a star of anyone pembrokes were removed from the vulnerable native breeds list in 2016 from what I can gather, I think we have a corgi group here in town, actually. I think so. Do you remember that guy? Did what, you get the pictures yet? Not yet. Do you remember that guy that um, we were in the dog park that time a few years ago, and the guy walked in, and I heard him shout, come on, Trevor, and I thought he was talking to his friend. <laughs> when I turned around, it was his corgi. <laughs> that was a good name. Come on, Trev. A lot of people like those human names for their dogs, and they are funny, I have to say. Well, there you go. That's my corgi bit. That's my corgi bit. So let's take another break, Mr. Jim, and I'll wait for my photos to come through an email. And uh, I'll see if I can find the corgi group and let them know, know about Barkingham Palace next week. All right, everyone, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about some nausea remedies for your pets when they don't feel too good. We'll be right back. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio with me, Sam, your host, the queen of rock and roll dogs. Vegas Rock Dog Radio Pets People Pop Culture Hey cat people Litter box smells always on your mind Think about your cat Not the box With world's best cat litter The litter that delivers Big odor control In a tiny package World's best cat litter Harnesses the concentrated power of corn To trap odors deep inside the litter Ready to knock out smells And use less litter Find World's Best Cat Litter at Target, Walmart, and in your local grocery and pet stores. Does your dog itch, scratch, stink, or shed like crazy? Come to Dynavite for help. Order a 90-day supply of Dynavite. Everything we tried failed except the Dynavite. Pick up two bottles of Super Mega Fish Oil. Get the third bottle free. Packed with omega-3, DHA, and EPA fatty acids. Super Mega is great for your dog's immune system, healthy skin, and soft, shiny fur. Dogs love it. Try Super Omega Fish Oil. Buy two. Get one free. At Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets. People. Pop culture. And we're back. So we're actually going to do a little bit of a change of direction away from the royal part of this whole show. And if you're just tuning in, you're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Oh, I can't get comfy today. Oh, my back hurts. Did you sleep okay on that new topper? Yeah, until I got my arm scratched off at three in the morning. <laughs> and then I had a gray 
monster show up on my chest and my face. <laughs> you have to obey the dogs, Jay. You must obey the dogs. <laughs> I was so tired last night, too. I don't even remember falling asleep watching that Michael McDonald concert. You know, they do have some good concerts, don't they, on PBS? Mm. Some really, they had Cheetah Rivera on there as well last night. It's always the best when they're raising money. They put the good stuff up. Yeah, have you noticed that at yeah. certain times of year when they do their big, but yeah, the big fundraiser? Then they put all really great content up there. Yep. Uh, yep. On, and all this week, they're going to cover so much of the royal wedding this week. So much of it. I, you know, I didn't get those photos, Jim, hmm. of the. I'll check my email send. Yeah, just double check. You know, sometimes you hit send and then it it tell, asks you what size images you want to send, and you forget about that. And that's what happens yeah, sometimes. I, hang on, I think it sent them. Hmm. Right, so let's talk about this. Often, your pets can get nauseous. Uh, in particular, and I had a friend this week who, who one of her dogs is just really feeling nauseous, and he um, he's on cancer treatment, and that can make them very, very sick, but your pets get sick for all kinds of reasons, motion sickness, travel sickness, um, food. I mean, they ingest something they shouldn't have ingested. And I think a sign that, you know, they kind of turn their nose up their food is, is a big sign. Something's mm-hmm. not right, you know, yeah. to, to not be interested yeah. in food. He says, he sent me the message. It says he has no content. What have you sent to me? He has no I content. Ah, oh, no, I found it. They're there. I found it. Oh, it's a link. Oh. Oh my gosh, corgis with fairies on their backs. That is everything. <laughs> I'll post these on our Facebook page. I think you would really enjoy looking at these. <laughs> the one with the queen on, a, on the back of a corgi. That's brilliant, Jim. <laughs> I'll, post, I'll post these. Oh my gosh, I love this whole... You know, this, what do you call it, a, not, um, oh, what do they call it, Jim? Jim. I'm sorry. What? I'm looking at some information right What now. do they call it? Not, a, like you said about the, it was believed that fairies, what do they call that? It believed that corgis were delivered to people by fairies. Mythology, Mytholo- there you go, that's the word I wanted. Beings. Yeah, oh, I really quite like it. Oh, I think it's adorable. <laughs> I like the one with the queen on its back more than anything. <laughs> so let's go back. Let's get back to the right the right topic here. And I will post the p- pictures on Facebook. I think you'll really enjoy them. So your pets can get nauseous for many, many reasons. And typically, um, and I was watching a great video on the Dog Cancer Series community page. And they were saying... You know, if your pet turns their their nose up at their food a second time, then you do need to address what's going on because that's always a sign that something's not quite right. And you do want to address it immediately. Uh, Dr. Karen Becker was mentioning that don't wait until what they call is, um, they call it um, you know, like pet anorexia where you've let it go for so long with them not eating, you know, and you're trying to get them to eat and, you know, what she calls doctoring up the food just to get them to eat, but you're not addressing the underlying issue. And so she says, you know, just act immediately. Don't waste time. Get yourself in there to the vet straight away the uh, the second time your pet hesitates to eat the food. Um, now, nausea doesn't mean necessarily that your pet is actually throwing up, but I think everyone can, you know, relate to how horrible that feels when you, you feel, oh, I feel so sick. And then you get scared because you think you're going to throw up. I mean, thats it's just a horrible feeling. It really is a horrible feeling. And as I say, you know, cancer treatments can cause it. Some meds can. Motion sickness travel. Or they've eaten something bad. I mean, it's a horrible feeling for them. Um, so what can you do to help them out? Especially at home with a natural remedy. And so um, Dr. Karen Becker talked about the vomulsion. I think I'm pronouncing it right. Vomulsion center of the brain. And what you're trying to do is quiet down that part of the 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 brain and reduce the trigger 
by the by by these remedies so that it reduces it reduces the trigger and then it reduces the gi upset and a couple of different ways in which you can do that very very interesting a lot of this stuff you will have at home and that's always great to have that arsenal of natural things that you can use at home especially if you can't get to a vet straight away and you want to try and take care of it um, immediately and herbs are the number one thing on a list here Ginger, peppermint, and chamomile. We know they are fantastic. For, ginger especially is very good, isn't it, Jim, for an upset stomach. It just oh, it just settles it down entirely. Mm-hmm. And you can do fresh and you can do your dried form. However, your dried form is far more concentrated. So you'll use less of it. And if you're trying to get that down your pet, then I guess the the you know the least amount that you have to try and get down there would be easier. But just remember that if you do use fresh, you're going to have to use a lot, lot more. And you may not have fresh at home, but you most certainly probably would have dry. So so dry ingredients, just make sure that they are not expired because they do lose their potency over time. And it's, it's, I mean, we just went through a bunch of stuff, didn't we, Jim? We had stuff that was so old. I was like, oh, get rid of that. And we'd not been using it. It was just sat there. So just get rid of all the old stuff. Make sure everything you've got is current and fresh. And her guidelines for the... Uh, ginger, peppermint, or chamomile is a quarter of a teaspoon per 10 pounds of body weight of your pet. This is for dogs in particular is what we're talking about. She says you can buy it in a tea form, make it super strong, a very strong infusion of it. And what you'll do is you'll add it to food. And if you need a little little bit of coaxing, then you could put a little bit of Parmesan cheese to interest your dog. Mm, now, I love anything that stinks. Yeah, well, Thornton's quite funny because I started her on an eye supplement, which is a powder. It's bilberry. It's bilberries in this this eye supplement. Has to go in the food. Of course, they have these incredible olfactors. You know, they can smell things from a fifty five thousand miles away, <laughs> and they can smell on different different layers. I've mentioned this in the show before. We can walk into someone's kitchen and go, oh, you baked a chocolate cake? Delish, I can smell it. It's amazing. But a dog will smell chocolate, flour, eggs, whatever is in the actual cake itself, which is phenomenal, really. So, of course, when I added in a brand new eye supplement, even though it's bilberries, (laughs) she just was like, "Mm, hang on. Literally, I thought she was going to put a paw up and said, can you explain this to me? Something's not right here. So I know that's why she turned her nose up at first because it was different. Yeah. So I know it wasn't because she was feeling sick. And you know, you know how I got to eat it? This is so funny. I don't even know that. I just moved it into a different location, her food, into a different location, and she went and ate it. Hmm. Isn't that funny? She's very interesting. Oh, she is. She's comical, that one. Uh, so that's your guidelines. Quarter of a teaspoon per 10 pounds buy it in a tea form uh, as an option make it strong make a strong infusion add it to food and add a little bit of parmesan cheese to interest your dog and um you know you it's a cool tea you're not giving that giving it to them hot i know it sounds like an obvious thing but sometimes people do don't think sometimes that happens like like the family that was safari park did you see that on the news I, i know i'm going down a bit of a tangent they were in a safari park, an entire family, just small kids, just a baby on a hip. And they got out of the car and then wondered why the flipping cheetahs were chasing them. Mm. They were so lucky, Jim. They were so lucky because well, they were already... If they would have got eaten, that would have been their fault. Oh, absolutely, it was their fault. Who gets out on a safari? Who even goes to a safari? <laughs> um, and so that's what you're going to do. Now, another thing that you can use are essential oils. Lots of chitter chatter about oils right now online. They can impact your pets, especially cats, in a very, very negative and life threatening way. That you need to know. There's a very popular brand on the market right now. I'm not going to say their name, but it is not, and lots of people are selling it. It is not appropriate for pets. It has never been tested and formulated for pets. It's never been tested to see if it would impact pets. So you cannot give those to your pets. One brand that was created by a veterinarian is uh, Dr. Melissa Shelton. She, uh, the, the name of her, her line is very easy, actually. Animal EO, Animal Essential Oils. Uh, you can buy fantastic combinations of these oils that do very specific things for your pets and of course they'll be good for you as well and what you do is you diffuse them and uh, you can actually join join her page it's specifically for 
her oils so people can ask lots and lots of questions she is on there very very active i'll tell you who else is also on that page and very active and extremely helpful is gregory lucas so uh you can head on over to that page it's a it's a, a oils are good for pets but you've got to use the right oils because the carriers can be very bad they can be synthetic oils and not real they're not organic those things are important when it comes to you and your pets so oils are the, are the next thing on the list. And you, the ones that work well for nausea are peppermint and lemon, which I love those smells anyway. I think they're fantastic. Make sure they are of a medical grade and always buy organic. And that goes with your herbs as well, uh, organic herbs, and make sure that they're not out of date like we said earlier. So we're still, we're still in the kitchen at this point when we come to remedies. And now we're going to talk about spices, cumin, cinnamon and fennel i'm not a fan of any of them i love cumin i don't I like, like fennel in a salad and i like fennel i like the fennel plant as just a vegetable i used to like cinnamon i think it has to be used sparingly otherwise it is overpowering and you cannot cinnamon and sugar and butter on toast delicious i think you use far too much cinnamon in your baking here i have to tell you I don't bake. <laughs> As a baker. I don't bake. As someone who bakes, you can't put cinnamon on everything. Because you cannot taste the other flavors of, of what is in the cake or pastry that you're making. But it is good for pets. Don't give it to them straight. Because do you think you could actually take a teaspoon of cinnamon down? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, it's, that's a rough one. And thankfully, you don't need much. You need a sixteenth of a teaspoon that's like a pinch yeah and that's per 25 pounds and you'll mix it in with the food and it's excellent for for nausea excellent there is a company that dr karen becker did recommend she was very um clear in stating that she was not paid to mention them she's not sponsored by them but the company is called integrative therapeutics and they have a nausea uh, supplement called ginger max and it's human medical line, high quality. And it comes in a little pearl, those little pearls that everybody's taking now. It comes in a pearl, you take one pearl per 25 pounds. That's got to be rather easy to get down a pet. They're tiny. And so that's another great um, remedy. And then there's one more. There's where, Well, there's one more. Oh, by the way, when we go back to the spices and it's a 16th of a teaspoon, that's per 20 pounds. I'll put all these up on my page so that you, you don't have to you know, try and write this down. And you mix it into the food, mix it in well. Now, your last one, and they call it the anorexia an annihilator is what they call it. And you're going to serve this with a syringe or you're going to serve it as food. You'd make a gallon of bone broth. Remind me about my bone broth, broth story from this week. This week, bone broth. I've got a bone broth story this week. It's just so great. Okay. Then you're going to add to that to, to oh, I'm going to say it's, mm, I'm going to say it's teaspoons, two teaspoons of fennel powder two teaspoons of cumin powder and one teaspoon of ginger powder and you mix all that together and you can make it into ice cubes as well. So there are lots and lots of ways in which you can help your pets if they're feeling nauseous and um, you know that goes from like I say from herbs to spices to the annihilator, <laughs> the annihilator, to the oils that you can diffuse. Oh, and there's one, there's well, actually there's three more, and um, acupuncture is one of them. Well, that's yeah, one, that's popular. That's one of them. B6 is one of them, and you would give one milligram per pound. And CBD oil, who's not using CBD oil these days? But CBD oil, and that is one milligram per 10 pounds to start. And you can use it between two to four times daily. When when Pam and I traveled across the country with her four dogs, and, and there's a couple of them that were quite nervous traveling, and of course motion sickness, because, you know, uh, buttercup threw up all over me. <laughs> Bless her little thing. And, you know, just being restless, we use CBD oil to actually relax the dogs. They were champs, Jim. They were brilliant because you know Mater he's very much like Galaxy used to be yeah. would stand up mm -hmm. and just panting and, and shaking and looking out the window just wouldn't lay down couldn't relax it didn't take long before he was flat out relaxed and he was great the whole trip because she said oh he normally likes to stand up I said yeah I know that and you feel bad because you think how exhausting for them 
to feel like they're on guard, they're nervous, they're anxious, you know, they're anxious, and they're tired because they've been stood up. I mean, who's going to stand up four mm. hours all the way to LA yep. like Galaxy used to? Yeah, and so, get the wind noises would bother. Yeah, or if Jim drove over those bubbles, then it would be over. So we had to be very careful driving. But CBD, it wasn't around back then, but CBD is so popular now. And what we found in Vegas, because we, we uh, you can you can get. We're, what's the word? We are legal. You can buy cannabis here legally. Now, of course, you're not buying cannabis, cannabis for your pets, but they do have the CBD oil at the dispensaries. Yeah, the rest of the plant is one of the most healthy things around. And so what I want you to know is that we, uh, we found that the dispensaries are cheaper for the CBD oil because it can be quite expensive in some of the stores. And we're actually going to be making a trip this weekend because we need to pick something up for Thornton. And I think that would, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, there's, there's a specific one that we're going to get, but it's, it's, a, it's quite a bit cheaper than everywhere else that we've seen it. So that's another great option. I'm going to sneeze. Ah, <coughs> oh, it's a good job, Jim, turn that mic off because that would have really hurt your ears. <laughs> that would have really hurt your ears. So there you go. There are your natural natural remedies. Lots to to choose from. All of those would work for you yourself as well if you feel sick. But that feeling is bad, isn't it? Especially when you just know you're gonna throw up and you think there's no way of stopping this, and it's a disaster. It's a disaster. Well, um, oh, and make sure, like I say, make sure that everything that you have in your cupboard that you're going to use is fresh. Oh, bone broth. Let's go back to the bone. I'm all over the place today. A little bit. My brain's a little bit fried. I'm, I am fried because I've been preparing this event and I am fried. I have to tell you, I am fried. Um, my friend, Cops. That's her, her last name is Copley. But we have always called her Cops our whole lives. Well, her dog, Lacey, had to go in for a surgery to have um, a lump removed. Thankfully, it's not cancerous. So everybody was so relieved and so happy for her because you know how that is when you're waiting for them to go through surgery and then you got to wait for the results. Well, she... Um, she said she brought her home. She was acting okay. And then she was acting weird and wouldn't eat. And they took her back in and they had to put her on fluids and everything. But she just would not eat. And I said, you know what? Make her some bone broth. Now, she's a vegan. My friend is a vegan. I said, she went, oh, I said, I know. I said, you know, can you get Piero, your husband, to make it? <laughs> she goes, no, I'll get Binny to do it. Binny's her mom. I love all the names we've got for our friends. So she says, I'll get Binny to make it. So I send her the recipe. Now, bone broth is like a superfood. When I make it at home, and there are a couple of different ways you can do it, but I, I get an organic chicken, you fill your, your crock pot with water, you put in your apple cider vinegar because that's going to leach out all the goodness from the bones. And, I mean, you, you're taking at least 24 hours to make this. You know, once that skin, ugh, the fatty skin goes gross, that comes off, you discard that, you never let your pets eat that. That's not good for them. And then you keep it in that crock pot. You might have to add some more water if need be. You know, then I pull all the cooked meat off, and that actually ends up, you know, being part of their dinner over the next couple of days. And then I let it just break down and keep going and keep going. And then eventually I strain it. And then because I have that whole other level of paranoia, I put the liquid in the blender just to make sure nothing got through. But what you'll find is the bones will just disintegrate, which is great because all that, the, all those nutrients are, are just going and, and minerals are going straight into that liquid. And then what you do is you serve a, I think we do a quarter cup for a tw our 20 pound dog. But I said, you know what? I don't know a single dog who has not enjoyed that and lapped it up and it's really helped when they don't feel well so anyway there was a whole story jim about having to go to the butchers <laughs> and another friend of ours was there works there it's at the supermarket but she had to go to the butchers and it was a whole saga because can you imagine you are vegan and you want to help your dog and it's just it grosses you out it Gross! She it's horrible. Did she drop to her knees? She she says she had such a hard time and um, you know, trying to explain what she was making. <laughs> She's a vegan, and then when she got to the checkout, she was like, "Could you just wrap it up, wrap it up, wrap it up?" So I can't see it. It's gross. Well, Auntie Binny made it. Yeah, Auntie Binny made it. We call her Auntie Binny. Auntie Binny made it, and uh, Cops' dad wanted <laughs> wanted to eat it. <laughs> He's not leaving some for me. <laughs> Oh, good. <laughs> so she says, well, if Lacey don't like it, I'll bring it back. So off they go. They took it in a, 
in a sherry bottle, I think, or something like that. And Lacey lapped it up. She lapped it up and really enjoyed it. So you know how it is. You feel bad when your pets don't eat because you know it's a sign of something going on. So she just had surgery. So I was really happy to, to hear about that. And I'll tell you something, what a champ, because, you know, if things gross you out like that, that's hard to do. That is rough to have to handle. It really is. So uh, big thumbs up to cops. And I'm so glad Lacey's doing a lot better. And Binny, Auntie Binny will have to make more bone broth for cops' as dad. <laughs> is that not funny? I guess it's good for him, too. It is. Well, you can buy bone broth for, for humans. Okay, or you can make it. You can make yeah. it. You can get it from Whole Foods. It's all pre-made, ready to go. Yeah, well, and uh, there are lots of companies now making. We used to call that soup growing up. No, it's not soup, Jim. Well, you no. put vegetables in, and it becomes. Well, you can soup. you can put some vegetables in. You can. Then it becomes soup. Okay. I love soup. It's my favorite. You do food. love soup. I must admit, it's one of your favorite foods. Well, it's Lacey's favorite. It's hard now to be bone a ve- broth. hard to be vegetarian though, and and be a soup lover. Well, n- well, not now that I've found those really good meat substitutes. I mean, they are amazing. I have to say, they are amazing. And if you are making that transition, it makes it so much easier, so much better than years ago. And if you've ever had the Beyond Meat burger, you will think you're eating a burger. So I think if you've done that transition, whether you're vegetarian or pescatarian or you, or you become vegan and you just get that craving, Beyond Meat, let me tell you why. It There's a compound in it called Hemi. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's found in meat and it's also found in a vegetable So and it tastes the same. So they've extracted it, took them eight years to extract it, develop it and put this plant-based Hemi into the plant-based burger. And of course, there are beets in it to make it look like it's red like meat and the texture's unreal and it tastes like a burger, doesn't so it, So if you're feeling, if you're vegetarian and you get nostalgic. Yeah, or you just get a craving, that will, honestly, if you gave that to someone and didn't tell them it was plant-based, they would honestly would think it was a burger, wouldn't they, Jim? I think so. You enjoyed it, didn't you? Mm-hmm. I did. They're I mean, a little pricey, but... They are, because I mean, it's a, it's a novel thing, you know, it's... Uh, maybe we'll get one of those today. Maybe we will. Or we can maybe, because you can buy them too. You can buy them as well, although it's really nice when they're made up for you. (laughs) And you feel a bit lazy. But honestly, I think it's a fantastic product. Eight years they took. They've got another bunch of stuff in their line, but that is the one with the Hemi in it, and that's why that burger's selling. I think they sold in the first week something like 20000 of them. Like, boom, gone really quickly. I think that was just in LA. Isn't that amazing? Oh, my shoulder just cracked. So how did I get onto the? Oh, I got on the habit uh, onto the topic of that because of bone broth. But you can buy dehydrated bone broths now. Um, you can buy dehydrated goat's milk now. You can buy so many dehydrated products now for your pets that are great. You know, they, that are a great convenience. And so, um, yes, and they have the bone broth for people too. I've seen it at Sprouts. So that's it, Jim. Have we come to the end of the show? Yeah, and my shoulder just... Does it just pop? Oh, my goodness. We sound, like, we sound like falling apart. I'm like, oh, my back hurts. He's like, well, oh, my shoulders. My shoulder. Well, you know, <laughs> they, they don't know what happened to me back in October, these people, I don't think. Yeah, they do. They know they, I got hurt. Yeah, they know. They're pushing the buttons with with four fingers <sighs> instead, of, instead of five. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's still recovering from his fall when he broke his finger and then broke his uh, shoulder. It takes some time, doesn't it, Jim? Just reminded me that it was broken almost a half, more than half a year ago. Wow, it's gone fast that time. Yeah. Well, we are at the end of the show, Jim. And for everyone that's listening, thank you for listening in. <laughs> it's definitely a little bit, it's somewhat of a theme. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes something pops into your head like the bone broth and you've got to tell the story because it was, it was a great success. But if you are listening to the show live, you can actually share directly from our page to your social media channels and we'd love for you to do that if you are listening on a, on a podcast platform then again pretty easy to share it and of course you can find us on iHeartRadio. you can find us on itunes you can find us on spoke by by uh sirius xm and pretty much any podcast app that you do have on your phone you'll be able to find us our main website is vegasrockdogradio.com and you will find us on all the popular platforms and right now i'm really into instagram and insta stories so uh, you'll find us on periscope facebook twitter pinterest tumblr and instagram and we do have a blog the rock and roll dog.com so lots of ways in which to find us and of course we love pictures of your pets so please post them on our social media channels 
Don't forget the names. Most people forget the names. Tell me the names. And if you are in Vegas and you want to come and help us raise money for animal rescue, then come on down to Barkingham Palace. You can get your tickets at Rocking for Rescues. That's number four, rockingforrescues.org backslash swag. But you can find it even if you just go to the homepage. Well, remember this. You can help an animal in need. Either rescue, adopt, donate, volunteer, or share their information. Rescue your next family member. Replace the word shop with adopt. And be kind to all animals. Jim, thank you so much for running the show, Mm -hmm. producing the show. It's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. It's been a pleasure. And uh, everyone, please take take a moment to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And as I said, don't forget to post pics of your pets. And we love to see those fur babies today. You have been listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio, where it's all about pets, people, and pop culture. I'm your host, Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs. And always kiss your pets good morning and good night. And I will see you next time. You've been listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets, people, pop culture. Visit Vegas Rock Dog Radio for more information. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and subscribe on iTunes and iHeartRadio. And remember, give your fur babies a big kiss from me, Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs. You must not rely on the information in this broadcast from our host as an alternative to medical advice from your veterinarian. If you have any specific questions about a medical matter regarding your pets, you should consult your veterinarian or specialist. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.